What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. In this episode, we're talking all things biologicals, what they are, how they work, and if they can make a difference in your crops. I'm Aaron, and this is Colin. Let's dig in. When we talk about biologicals, there's really two different categories that fall underneath that whole biological spectrum. The first one is gonna be living biology products, right? These bug in a jug type things. We're looking at fixating nitrogen on, on a lot of them now. That's the big topic on these things, but we're putting actively living bacteria and biology down into the soil. The other category though, is gonna be these biostimulant type products. These aren't necessarily new to agriculture. There's definitely new products coming online all the time, but some of these are things that you've probably used on your own farm in the past. And what we're doing with these biostimulants is we're feeding the biology we already have down there in the soil. So products like sugars, uh, humic acids, fulvic acids, some of these marine extract products, they've been around for a while. And these are something that we need to talk about when we're referring to biologicals. But when it comes to understanding biologicals, Aaron and I, we're simply amateurs. We need a pro. I know just the person. They're kind of hard to get a hold of sometimes, but we'll see. Hey, 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 um, so we're shooting a dig video right now and it, it's all about biologicals and we could just, we could really use your expertise if, you, if you've got some time. You, you do have time. That's great, that's great. Yeah, just come on out here and meet us and uh, we'll, we'll do the thing. Who is it? Go find out. What, what even is that? What, this? what even is that kind of technology? Dude, I just got this at Radio Shack not that long ago. It's my new, it's my phone. I get signal anywhere. I would assume so with two antennas. Yeah, don't be jealous. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's... Jim, it's great to have you here, bud. How did you do that? Superpower. Leave it to you to have superpowers. Jim, we're talking about biologicals. Can we tap into your superpowers to learn a little bit more about biologicals and how they work? Absolutely, guys, I'm here to help. I've got about three things to share with you about biologicals. Number one, biologicals are a wide open space. You know, you think about the folks that come to us in practical farm research, about 70% of the products that are brought to us today, they involve a biological. But it's really important to understand there are so many different products. There's a big vacuum out there and folks are trying to fill that vacuum. So it's very important to understand not only the difference between biologicals, but the fact that there are things like biologicals and biostimulants and understand what category these products fall under. Number two, we honestly know very little about how biologicals actually work or what they do in many instances. Think about this. If I have a teaspoon of soil in my hand, that teaspoon of soil has somewhere in the neighborhood of 16, 17,000 different species of bacteria and six to 8,000 different species of fungi. Any biological that we test has to go into that soil environment and compete with all those different species of bacteria and fungi. I'm not even sure that we know how to test these products correctly. One thing to consider, let's say we use a biological with a starter. How does the salt in that starter impact the performance of that biological. Let me give you one other thing to think about. Let's say we want to test a biological like a phosphorus solubilizer. Where do those products come from? Typically, we get them from the soil. What happens if we test a product that's a phosphorus solubilizer in a soil that has a high level of that bacteria already in it? It'd be the same as say, if you, if you tested nitrogen and say you wanted to add 30 pounds of nitrogen and you already have 500 pounds of nitrogen down. Do you think you're going to see a big response? Probably not. That's why it's so challenging to test and understand the performance of biologicals. And number three, the newer biologicals on the market that focus on nitrogen are a big topic right now. The first thing I want you to think about with these products is how they fix their nitrogen. A lot of them fix the nitrogen into the soil and then it has to get into the plant. But think about this, of the nitrogen that you put on your soil in any one given year, what percent of it actually gets into the corn plant? I hate to tell you this, but it's somewhere in that 40 to 60% range. So just because a biological fixes nitrogen in the soil doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get into the plant. The other thing we're learning is that 
These biologicals also have to compete within the soil. When we talk about 17,000 species of bacteria and six to 8,000 species of fungi, they have to compete in order to do their work in the soil. They're competing for resources like sugars from the corn roots and things like that. So there's a competition that goes on that is a challenge for these biologicals, and we don't necessarily understand that. The third thing we have to think about with a lot of these nitrogen-fixing bacteria is they're root colonizers, and they have a special symbiotic relationship with the plant. What they do is they go to the plant and they say, hey, Mr. Plant, I'm going to attach to your root and I'm going to cut you a deal. You're going to give me carbon and in exchange, I'm going to give you nitrogen. When a plant goes under stress, one of the things that the plant does is it has to respire to keep cool. And in doing so, it starts burning supplemental carbon that it might normally give to that biological on the root. So the plant goes to the biological and says, hey, I'm sorry. I know we had a deal, but I need that carbon to respire and keep cool. And that biological on the goes, I, I get you, I understand that, but if you can't give me the carbon, I can't give you the nitrogen. So that symbiotic relationship is broken. So does that mean the biological doesn't work? Not necessarily. It just means that something changed in the relationship to hinder the process that goes on. In the end, when you think about these biologicals, the thing I want folks to think about is try them. I would always encourage folks to try these things. Try them in the environment in which they would probably see the highest return lower CEC soils, corn after corn environment, but make sure when you do that, you're always trying a lower nitrogen strip right next to the biological to ground truth the performance of the product. Jim, thanks for stopping by and helping us out with this whole biologicals, but this is Aaron and I show, you're free to leave. I'm happy to help. All right. Time for me to fly. See you, Jim. What? He already made a hole coming in. Why do you need to make a second one? That's a big hole. Now we gotta call facilities, tell them about the hole, well, both holes. You can call them. I don't wanna call them. We'll make Jim call them. Google me, yeah, yeah, I'll make yeah, Jim call Jim them. can call them. <sighs> that was kinda cool though, not gonna lie. Now that we have a better understanding of biologicals, let's talk about some of the PFR proven products that we have identified. In corn, Micro AZ, Inferro, and Nanozyme 2.0 have both shown great results. MicroAZ Inferro is a corn inoculate that contains two strains of stabilized azospirulin bacteria, which fix atmospheric nitrogen and stimulate root growth. Has a PFR proven ROI of just over $15. Nanozyme 2.0 contains sugars, humates, and seaweed extracts, along with a blend of minerals and nutrients that are beneficial to stimulating the natural biology that occurs in your soils. It has a PFR proven return of $16 to 67 cents per acre. In soybeans, one of the top products we want to highlight is a Terramax Liquid Inferro, an inoculate containing grainy rhizobium that promotes nodulation in soybeans. This product has a PFR proven return of $13.07 per acre. Well, Colin, you know, we're no microbiologists, but I think we did a pretty good job, you know, getting that information out there. Yes, yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon, which will give you notifications for our next dig video. And we will see you on the next episode of The Dig. Well, I, uh, I think I'm out of here. What do you mean? That's the third hole. I'll make four. I think I can do this. Spider Man. Forget it. <laughs>